This is Liberty Park, Memphis, Tennessee, one of the nation's largest sports complexes. For basketball, it's the Mid-South Coliseum, football, the Liberty Bowl, and it's even home of the professional baseball team, the Memphis Chicks. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Leake, and coming up next, the top names in the world of truck and tractor pulling as Power Tracks presents the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series. Power Tracks presents the most powerful sport on earth, the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series. Turning the power on. Power Trucks is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. See the lightning hit on the road. And welcome everybody to the Mid-South Coliseum, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Richard Leake along with Army Armstrong. And Army, we're about to kick off our super modified two-wheel drive red man competition. Ought to be dandy. We got some of the top names in the uh, sport of pulling here. Well, the top names in the sport are here, Richard, is the track crew finalized track preparation. The track crew, as we use all over the country on the TNT Tour, the world famous Floyd Knobs, Indiana-based Track Builders Incorporated. They build the horsepower track. The number one sled in the sport is going to be here. The competition's here. Everything says Super Show, it's coming your way. Tell us a little bit about the track itself and the uh, clay-dirt mixture there. Well, the clay that we use here at Memphis, and it, it is clay, it's not dirt, it has a good, strong mixture. It goes back together real good. The moisture's there. Looking for some horsepower, definitely. Well, we've got names like Jim Crabtree, Billy Johns, Wayne Roush, Dick McPherson, and more. They're coming your way as we start the competition straight ahead on Power Tracks with TNT Motorsports. Chevy versus Ford test, right? We came up with one of our own. Half-ton 4x4s, best available tires, driven at the same identical speed right through this 18-inch deep ditch. Now, this is a real control test, so don't you try it, because you'll damage your truck. That's the Chevy with torsion bar suspension, and that's the Ford with twin traction beam suspension. And you can see why we've had a change of heart and pickup. That's today's Chevy truck. Sylvia, I'm tired of mambo lessons. Who are you? I'm Captain Color Time, champion of Rent to Own. Did someone say combo lessons? What's a combo? It's a complete home entertainment system, combining a TV, VCR, and stereo, all in one great package you can rent, starting as low as $19.95 a week. I could have sworn I heard someone say combo lessons. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no greasy stains. Why sports cream? Because it works. There's an enemy in your car's engine. Cold. Some motor oils have poor pumpability and can't flow fast enough in cold weather. They can damage your engine and send it to an icy grave. You need the special quality of Pennzoil motor oil. Pennzoil has the right pumpability to flow faster and protect your engine. Conquer the enemy cold with the world-class protection of Pennzoil. And we're about ready to rock the halls of Mid-South Coliseum for the Super Modified Two-Wheel Drive event. Driver skill going to be very important in this competition, Army. Well, Richard, it will be. We have a very diverse group of vehicles here. You know Memphis, Tennessee is home of the National Street Rider Association. Look what comes out. A 40 Ford. Boy, he's got to be loving it. The crowd's getting behind him. He's out of Ohio. Jim Crabtree will be taking a first shot. And the name of his truck is the Little Rascal. As you said, he's out of St. Louisville, Ohio. He's powered by Rodak, and you'll see a lot of the vehicles today with that Rodak engine. Well, a Rodak engine basically is nothing more than an aluminum version of a big block Chevrolet. A lot of the parts interchange. Crabtree in a unique situation. He is listed as a test puller. However, he will have the option at the end of the track to say, yes, the test has been passed, the sled is set, or no, I want to come back. And it looks like an awfully good run from our viewpoint, Richard. All right, Jim is shutting it down at 162.05. That is a good distance for a test pull. Yeah, the track looks good. The test pull looks awfully good. We're going to check and see if he'll keep it, Richard. All right, Jim Crabtree and the Little Rascal Ford out of Ohio. He's the defending Ohio State points champion. 
also the winner of the Farm Machinery Show last year. We're going to go trackside with Army now. Richard Jim Crabtree drew that number one spot. You went a 162. Now you're going to keep that pull. Do you think the track's going to stay the way it is? I don't know, but I don't know what I could did any better to make my track work any better that time, so I took it. It looked awfully strong all the way through. The weight looked perfect. Yeah, it felt good, too. You know, I had some problems, and I think i got to sort it out. I feel good about the run. It might not hold up, but I'm taking it. So Jim has set the official lead distance now, Army, at 162.05. Our next puller out, Keith Long out of Glasgow, Kentucky. He uh, named his vehicle Long Gone. It's powered by the KB Hemi Chrysler engine. Yeah, but his Chevrolet sheet metal, so the Chevrolet people of Memphis, Tennessee, are really getting behind this fella. Matter of fact, this is our first opportunity to see him on the short. Good-looking truck. Wait, look. Hey, looky here, Richard. He's got a good shot going. He has got a nice shot going. I think he's going to beat the lead distance. He does it easily at 170.79. So our second puller out, Keith Long, takes the lead. And obviously the track is going to get better with each and every pull. Let's go to Army. 170.79. One, one Keith, that'll put you in the lead right now. Yeah, but it, I don't know if it's going to stay very long because that's too light on the front. They wish the truck out, I think. Awfully good run up. Yeah, it, it was a good run. It, I was all right. I need one more weight to the front, but I'll get him to mark. Now, this is a brand new truck, isn't it? Yeah. Me too. I'm brand new at it. <laughs> well, you're awfully good, son. Thank you. I sure appreciate it. Oh, don't listen to him. He's not that new. He's a dandy out there on the track. You know, Army, on this Redman Circuit, we've seen husband and wife teams and brother and brother teams. But today, we've got a father and son team, Jeff and Dick McPherson out of Circleville, Ohio. I know you spent the afternoon with them earlier today here in Memphis. Truck and tractor pulling has been around long enough now. We're getting into second generation driving. And my media ride is Jeff McPherson. He's out of Ohio. He runs an open competition. One of his strongest competitors, his father, Dick McPherson. Now, Dick, how do you feel running an open competition with your son? This is kind of an interesting situation here. Well, I've just been down the track so many times. It's, uh, I would kind of, whoever hooks first, it just gives us a, a helping hand for the other truck coming behind it. You fellas actually run one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, how does it feel when you beat Dad? Does that affect your allowance or anything? No. Uh, last year, we had a lot of engine trouble. We had a smaller engine in my truck, and he told me this year that I was going to have to get my truck back in the top and win more than what we had before. And it doesn't really matter. Just whichever truck comes out on top, we're happy. If we can get them both up there, we're even more happy. How old are you, young man? I turned 23 in January. How long have you been on the tour? A couple of years. I've been driving for this be my third year driving. What do you see as the future of this sport? I see that with the television and the big sponsors getting in, that possibly we'll become a lot bigger sport like the NASCAR, and hopefully that one day we'll be able to make a living and travel across the country all as a full-time job with pulling. You know, I'll tell you something. If Jeff McPherson doesn't make it in the world of pulling, he could very well make it in the world of movies. He's a good-looking kid, and he's got a lot of driving talent, as we're about to see. Jeff McPherson, the toy truck king, is on the roll, Army. Hey, keep an eye on this. Get out of the Buckeye State, trying to go on the other side of a 170. Does not do it. Giant, a 164, Richard. 164.03 for Jeff McPherson. He's out of Circleville, Ohio. We'll see his dad a little bit later on. Let's go to Army now. Yeah, the truck looked awfully strong on the run. It seemed like you might have been able to get in a little bit quicker on the starting line. Well, we came off the starting line real easy, and it seemed to me in the truck, the moment I opened the motor wide open, the truck just stopped. Like, you really need to come out easy and build up your speed, which we've noticed this sled works a lot, a lot of the time. From about the 75-foot mark out, though, it seems like the harder you push it, the more power it made. About, a, I would say about 100 to 125 feet. It seemed like the truck really stopped, where that's where the, the box, you know, over-centered on the sled and really put it on, the, on your hard then. Oh, we've got good action going in the Mid-South Coliseum. We'll be right back with more Super Modified two-wheel drive pulling on the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series. Accidents can happen any number of ways. An attack by a vicious dog, an injury from a fall, a motorcycle or automobile mishap. Siegel, Kelleher, and Kahn is well recognized for personal injury law. They've helped hundreds of people like you collect money for the negligence of others. If you've been a victim, Talk to a lawyer who cares. Your initial consultation is free. Siegel, Kelleher, and Kahn. Offices throughout Western New York. Call 1-800-888-5288 today. At Gambino Ford and Lincoln Mercury and Gambino Toyota, we know there's more to buying a car than getting the lowest price. 
The Gambino goal is to give you outstanding service and treatment along with our best price. So you'll want to buy your next car from us and the next. Wherever you bought your Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, or Toyota, bring it to us for service that won the highest award from Ford for three years running. My goal is no unhappy customers and no unhappy employees. Gambino Ford and Lincoln Mercury, Gambino Toyota, Niagara Falls, Gambino Ford, Lockport. The preparation is complete. Now it's time for game day. Game day previews all the day's action Saturday and Sunday mornings on ESPN. And the TNT Motorsports action continues in Memphis, Tennessee. We're moving through the supermodified two-wheel drive competition. Your leader thus far, Keith Long, at 170.79. Our next puller coming out, James Richard Chapman. They call him Dick on the circuit. He drives the Wild Ram. It is powered by a 541 cubic inch engine, Army. You know, Richard, one of the reasons I really like this sport is all manufacturers are represented. This is a Dodge Power vehicle. You can't buy a ticket and see a Dodge on a circle track, but believe me, you come to Memphis on the TNT Red Man Tour, this Dodge is up here battling with the best of them. Not going to be his night, however. He dropped shy of the 160, Richard. 158.83, the official distance. A little bit of problem getting up the horsepower. The front end looks to be a little bit light. I think basically what they call it in the sport, he missed his weight. And that is going to bring out a real veteran to the sport, Richard Wisnett, Union Grove, Alabama. It's called the Hot Shot. It is a Chevrolet sheet metal and also powered by Chevrolet, a big 468 cubic inch engine. You know, even to be such a young man, this kid has got a lot of miles under his belt. He's driven in the tractor category. He comes in the two-wheel drive category. Now, he won on the state level championships this past year, 88, in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama, and still ran for the national points and finished in the top 10. This kid's a cover, believe me. And he has got a good pull going. Yes, sirree. 173.90. Richard Wisnett out of Union Grove, Alabama has just jumped into first place in Memphis. He has got to be happy with that pull. We're going to go track side. Richard, this is C. Wordy. This went into the lead. Can you hang on to it? I don't know. There's still a lot of tough trucks left to go. I think track may be going away. I kind of hope it does. It'd be in my favor. Truck looked a real strong for you tonight, Memphis. Yeah, it, it hooked pretty good out there. I could have used a little more motor, but you got to do what you got to do. Well, you're set number one. Let's see how long we can keep you there. All right, thank you. Oh, I'm going to disagree with Richard Wisnett, our leader there. He says he thinks the track is going away. I think, actually, the track is coming around. As we get ready for Billy Johns, the Willie Make It 1940 Willie Sheet Metal, he is out of Adairsville, Kentucky Army. What do you think about the track, though? I think that I'm in agreement with you. I think the track's going to come around, and how appropriate can it be? Willie Make It, a beautiful 40 wheelers. We talked a moment ago about all the street ride people. This is their headquarters. And look at the diversity. All the different pieces of equipment. We're in trouble. Richard, he's out of bounds. Disqualified. He had a great shot going, and there, toward the end of the pull, he veered off. To his right, and of course on the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series circuit, if you go outside that white line, you are disqualified, or as Dick Vitale might say, Army, it's the big DQ. Richard, it's the NP in him in this sport. No points, no money. So, Billy Johns and Willie Make It heads home after a disqualification. We get ready next for a guy that I call a real legend on the circuit. He asked me over and over again not to say that, but Wayne Roush had a double in Ohio driving his yellow Model T Army. He has been a puller now for 10 years. Prior to that, he was a farmer for 27, a college professor for some 14 years. He was an aircraft controller. He was a marketing specialist. This guy's done it all, and he is the defending national champion. We noticed just a moment ago some of the FFA members from the Memphis area, they're here pulling for Roush with this Dodge Power Ford Fiberglass Replica 23 Ford. And if anybody can read this track, it's going to be this man here. You, oh, watch the right hand. You notice he's nailed the throttle. Coliseum. The crowd loves it. And I know Wayne Roush is going to be tickled to death because he just hit himself a home run. Richard, you're a big baseball fan and in baseball terminology. Wayne, you put her out of here, son. That was pretty good, Army. It was a little bit slow coming out of the hole, but it, it, it picked up the speed and it, it felt good. Wayne, when you draw late in a field like that, do you learn anything by watching the fellas pull in front of you? 
Yeah, I tried to. You can see how it's biting out of the hole, and, and you get a little bit of information on the balance of the truck. You've got to transfer the weight to the rear tires, and this just barely did it. I mean, we were we were just there, and that was all. Wayne Roush is what you might call the thinking man's puller. I know he has had at this track many hours before the competition starts working on his vehicle. As we get ready for Richard McPherson, we saw his son Jeff run earlier today. Jeff didn't have as good a luck as Richard hopes he's going to have. Out of Circleville, Ohio, it looks like a street rod army. Well, really, the 23 body is very similar to what Roush had. But instead of a street rod, I'm going to say this one looks a little more like an altered car on a sported drag race. And there's so many different rollovers into this sport. Anything goes, and everybody loves it. Same body style as Roush, just a different location. Now, remember his son in the interview said that they work together. The son's already pulled. He learned something. He told his dad, and Richard, it looks good. Look at this run. Boy, did he ever learn something. He has tied Wayne Roush for the lead. going to join Wayne Roush in a pull-off. Will there be more? We'll find out with more power tracks in a moment. They always say, it's not whether you win or lose. Better stick selling corn, Dave. It's how you play the game. Lose it by dinner. But it sure felt good when Garst Hybrids stole the show again oh. by an even bigger margin. The teeth. Ask your Garst seed salesman for all the details. You know, there's nothing wrong with second place. Woo, you got stuck, huh? It sure is nice being first. Thanks. <laughs> beers that are cold filtered only one has that distinctively clean crisp taste budweiser cold filtered and beechwood aged for over 110 years and welcome back to power tracks in memphis tennessee an army i feel like kind of a prophet you know earlier in this competition richard wisnut took the lead felt pretty confident. He said he thought the track was going away. We said we thought it would come around. And lo and behold, since Richard made his pull, we've had two full pull pulls, uh, one by Dick McPherson, one by Wayne Rash. We may not be over for the night as Lindy Alexander's coming out next. Well, Lindy is going to tell us something, whether the track is going to stick or not. Remember, we opened the show, Richard. We were talking about the Track Builders Incorporated building the best tracks in the sport. The book on their track is they get better as the nights go along. That's exactly what's happened here. A black sheep. Richard, a rare truck. It's a Studebaker truck. <laughs> but it's powered by Chevrolet, a big 496 Chevy engine in it. Out of Winer, Arkansas, this is Lindy Alexander. Looks good. Good ground speed. He is going to come up short, though, of where he needs to be, 170.68. For Lindy Alexander, that is going to be good enough right now for about fourth place. With two trucks to go, let's go now to our question of the week. And our question of the week about the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series comes to us from Eric Street of Roseville, Michigan. And Eric wants to know how much air pressure is in the rear tires on a super-modified two-wheel drive pulling truck. Well, Eric, when the two-wheelers run indoors, as they are here in Memphis... The rear tires carry around 22 to 24 pounds of pressure. Outdoors, the rear tires have around 26 to 28 pounds of pressure. Now, the reason for the difference is that indoors, the tracks are shorter and the weight gets on top of the vehicle in a hurry. That means pullers want maximum traction and bite right from the beginning of the pull. Outdoors on a long track, getting momentum is much more important. That's why a firmer tire with more air pressure is used. It spins on the track rather than digging in immediately, and that gets the sled moving. And if you have a question about the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series, send it to us at TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. And if we use your question on a future television program, we'll send you free a TNT Motorsports hat.
And we are now ready for our final two trucks. We've already got two and a pull-off. That would be Dick McPherson and Wayne Roush. Our next puller, Bobby Knight, would be proud of him. He's a graduate of Indiana University. His name is George Milligan, a former professional football player with Tampa Bay. He is driving the I Rock and Roll Camaro. Well, the Chevrolet people are going to be pulling for this young man, but he's teamed up with a Chevrolet dealer out of Evansville, Indiana, and they bought the horsepower called an Arius Racing Engine, Richard. And another big name, uh, a big guy that's helped him out. We've said his name, I don't know how many times. Tim Engler helped build this machine. Yeah, the chassis or the framework is an Engler chassis, the Arius Racing Engine. The I Rock and Roll is a fiberglass replica of a Corvette. All right, George Milligan giving up professional football to fight between the trenches of a track. You know, it's kind of interesting how he backs up. He cannot see behind him, so what he does, he watches his crew member who walks in front of him. The crew member is watching the man on the front of the sled. The man on the sled is the one actually backing him up. Milligan's going after him. Brand new engine combination. Let's see if it's going to work. He did some heads up driving and hooked to the right, came back, but we'll see him again in a pull -off. And uh, George Milligan joins Wayne Roush and Dick McPherson in a pull-off. We're going to join Army with uh, George right now. Richard, now we have three. This one's going to come out of the Kenny Kent team in Evansville, Indiana. George, with the I Rock and Roll Camaro, you were doing this at. You were rock and rolling in Memphis tonight. Well, I talked to my sponsors before I left, Dave Adcock, and he made a pass for me to be here. We decided that the blower we were using was too small, so we bought a new blower. He said, if you want to play the music loud, you got to rock and roll. And I told him I was going to stand on it. That's just what I did. Full tilt. He pulled the trigger. He'll be back in a pull-off. Believe me, we're going to be watching him. Hell, as you know, in Memphis, the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, this was his home. How appropriate that someone like George Milligan and a rock and roller himself gets into a pull-off. As this is our final truck of the competition, Wayne Roush is back this time with his little red truck, the 1986 Dodge. You know, Richard, the first year that a national champion was crowned in the super modified two-wheel drive, this is the truck that won it. The little red truck has been around. It gets better and better. As it goes down the course, Richard, look for another full shot. He's got two bullets. He put both of them all. Nails it right at the end. I have never seen this in my many months on the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series circuit where we had four trucks qualify for a pull-off, but it has happened here in Memphis. Wayne Roush gets two trucks in the pull-off. Joining him will be Dick McPherson and George Milligan. Back with the action in a moment on Power Track. There's an enemy in your car's engine. Friction. Without the right motor oil, friction can damage your engine and send it to an early grave. You need the special quality of Pennzoil motor oil. Pennzoil exceeds the API's highest standards for maximum protection against friction. Conquer the enemy friction with the world-class protection of Pennzoil. Over 28 million adults get athlete's foot. I'm Jim Bird. I had athlete's foot until I used MP27. It has an ingredient recommended by doctors. Look, MP27 stops the burning, itching of athlete's foot fast. MP27, nothing's a better cure for athlete's foot. We're back with another test of Chevy versus Ford. And this one you can do at home. Just load both trucks with eggs, then lower something heavy down on them. You'll see that Chevy has these notches that let you do double deck loading. You'll see that Ford doesn't have any notches. That's why we've had a change of heart about pickups. With Ford, you can bring home the bacon. With Chevy, you can bring home the bacon and the eggs. The heartbeat of America and the day Chevy truck. 62 teams, 31 games, 23 conference championships. The best basketball of the season. Championship Week continues tonight, live on ESPN. Richard Leake, along with Army Armstrong, back with you in Memphis, Tennessee, where we have got a four-truck pull-off going on to crown the king in Memphis. And we're going to kick it off, Army, with Wayne Roush, his yellow model T, and get these numbers. Last year on the circuit, Wayne ran 82 events. 
He came in first 23 times, had 21 seconds. You know, he's really an interesting individual. He told you all this story, but one thing I like about Roush is you can see everything he does. Look at the determination. Watch the right hand. You can see the engine. Everything Roush does is right there for everybody to see. It's one of the reasons he's one of the real interesting pullers. Now, he's out at a 158. That'll set the distance. Everybody else has to beat in this pull-off. 158.22, and keep in mind now, they have increased the weight of the sled. That is Richard McPherson. He's going to be our next puller. Here's Army. Richard, in a four-way pull-off, Wayne Rouse has two shots to take a win. He just made a good run. This is the lead distance. The other three have to go after him. One of those three will be himself. Now, Wayne, a 158. A 158, the distance we get. Do you think that's going to hold on for you, or can you do better with the other truck? I'm worried about this one. You know, there's been a lot of confusion over the truck. A lot of people call it a Ford, but it's powered by what? KB Hemi, Chrysler product. One of the Dodge boys, looking awfully strong in Memphis. Well, Wayne Roush may be a little bit wor worried, Army, but he looked like a fox fixing to go in a hen house also. He had that smile about him. Yeah, remember now, he's got two shots at this pull-off. He learned something on that one. Right now, his worst nightmare could be the Missouri Raider. McPherson, he's kind of a fox himself. This guy can nail you to the wall in a heartbeat. He's lining up middle of the track. Chevrolet, Rodak engine for horsepower, 23 fiberglass body. McPherson's going after Roush in Memphis. It is Richard McPherson out of Circleville, Ohio. He is sponsored by Kendall Motor Oil, and he has taken that Chevrolet-powered machine to the number one spot. We're going to take our microphone down to talk to Dick right now. We've got two more to go in the pull-off. I rock and roll, and Roush with a little red truck. You think either one of them can pull further than you? Oh, yeah, all I'm going to do it is it's just, uh, you know, we're uh, everybody's pretty close to max on power, and whoever makes mistakes is going to lose. Now George Milligan, our next puller in the I Rock and Roll Camaro, hoping he doesn't make a mistake. This is an Arius 8.3 liter engine out of Evansville, Indiana. Well, now George told us a little bit earlier, he found some more horsepower, that being in the shape of the supercharger. Now the supercharger sits right on top of the engine. As a matter of fact, you notice that round object, that's the injection that sits on top of the supercharger. He's found the horsepower, that's where it's gonna come from. But believe me, when you change superchargers, you're really taking some risk as far as, did I go the right way? Did I go the wrong way? It's a cramp shoot. We're gonna watch Milliken on his shot. Meanwhile, Roush goes back to get ready to load up for his second and final shot with a Dodge-powered vehicle. Now let's sit back and enjoy this beautiful Camaro. He's got a fire, Richard. i got to go check it out. He just lifted the floor with a lot of fire. That is Army doing double duty as a fireman right now, putting it out. As you know, earlier in an interview that uh, George had with Army, he talked about putting a new blower uh, on this beautiful Camaro. He just lifted it right there. Army, are you back with us? Yeah, Richard, the indication you're watching, you got a little bit of fire out of each side of the engine. That was an indication that a valve was having some problems and just what they call it, banged the blower. It just lifted the top off. Now, TNT made some run restraints, safety restraints. That's what kept the engine basically in a, in a pretty good shape. He'll be able to come back and run, but look who goes up for the final shot of the evening, Richard. And it is Wayne Roush again, this time in the little red truck. Remember, the distance to beat is 159.89. That is held by Dick McPherson right now, and uh, they are going to load up George Milligan's high rock and roll Camaro and head back to Evansville, Indiana. He did put on a show, though, didn't he? Yeah, but Milligan, you can watch this kid. Remember, he'll be back another time, another day, but this is the time, this is the day for the little red truck for the Dodge fans. Let's see what's going to happen. He's going after the Missouri Raider Richard. He's not going to do it. Good enough for third place. Wayne Roush, 157.32. He had two vehicles in this pull-off, and he couldn't win with either of them. Dick McPherson gets the victory. We're going to get trackside. Especially when it came down to two, it was a Dodge out of Ohio and a Chevrolet-powered vehicle out of Ohio. Fellas, you guys did a tremendous job. Dick, congrats on this win this evening. Thank you. It was a... It was just a lucky win. Wayne could have been there just as well as I'm there. 
I was talking to Dick right before you ran. He said, the guy that makes a mistake tonight, that's the only thing that's going to lose. He said, everybody's making about the same horsepower. It's just going to be basically the luck of the draw. Do you agree with that? It was a good contest. Uh, my truck settled down a little bit at the end, and, and Dick carried. I think that made the difference. I, I didn't move quite enough weight back. Well, congratulations to our pullers. We'll run down the top five. Richard Wisnett in fifth. Fourth, George Milligan. Third, Wayne Roush. Wayne also takes second. And the winner in Memphis, Tennessee, Dick McPherson. For Army Armstrong, I'm Richard Leake saying so long from the Mid-South Coliseum. We'll see you on the tracks across America. Join us next time for Power Tracks, the most powerful sport on earth. Brought to you by TNT Motorsports, the nation's leader in pulling and monster truck racing. Many rods. The many power rods, Richard. We're excited about it. You know, Memphis, Tennessee is known for the blues, but believe me, we're going to see some good old-time rock and roll tonight when these fellas roll to the sled. Now, speaking of the sled, you notice the sled we're going to be pulling this evening is smaller than the normal sled we use, but the theory is exactly the same. It's a weight transfer sled, the weight box at the rear. As they go down the track, it'll go forward, putting more pressure on the skid pan, and that's what'll slow them down. All right, and talking about the sled, about how much weight will be in the sled for the mini rod competition, I know these guys generate about 2,000 horsepower. They'll be pulling around 35,000 total pounds of weight, Richard. Our first official puller is going to be Richard Peters out of Thornville, Ohio. He calls his tractor the Buckeye Special. It's powered by a 557 blown Rodak engine. You know, a lot of people, they kind of get mixed up on the Rodak engine combination. If you're a Chevrolet fan, you can pull for this Rodak, too. We'll explain a little bit later. The Rodak and the big block Chevrolet engine, very, very similar. And look at this run. What ground speed. First one out of the box lays down a one 78 shot, Richard. 178.17 for the Buckeye Special of Richard Peters. A full pull here in the Mid-South Coliseum, 180 feet. What about the track, Army? How does it look to you? The track's looking real good. They seem to be a little bit of rocks out there the drivers are concerned about. you got to remember, they are spinning these rear tires over 160 mile an hour. That might be a problem a little bit later. And they do have a tendency to rut the track a little bit. We're going to be watching some definitely different driving styles this evening. And this is Larry Kester out of St. Wendell, Indiana. The day of the tractor foot loose, and he's off and rolling. Big block, Chevrolet making a horsepower run a little bit. Like hooks to the left, Richard. He's had a little bit of problem. Had the back bend on it. That will definitely cost him some distance. Larry shuts it down after a pull distance, 160.35. Of course, the story of Larry Kester is legendary on the circuit by now. Losing his legs a couple of years ago in a tractor accident. Coming back to compete and actually winning championships. Now, there is a TNT official with the laser measuring device to get the official pulling distance of Larry Kester as we go trackside. Army's got Larry now. Well, Larry, you just pulled into the number two spot, but it looked like you had to back pedal about half track. How bad did that hurt you? A lot. Yeah, I could have, if I could have kept my momentum, I might have got it out the end, but it was drifting to the left and my brakes weren't coming in too good. I don't have quite the strength in my legs that a lot of guys do in their feet. That, that hurt me, but I, I believe if we could have stayed straight, we'd have got it out the end. All right, all of our pullers shooting for a distance of 178.17. That is held by Richard Peters, our first puller, as Ronald Vandertuck is up next. Ron is out of Marion, Michigan, and he drives a showdown tractor. An interesting thing about him, Army, this is really only his first year officially in mini rod pulling. You know, he's really excited about being in this class, as a lot of people are. This is a very rapid growing class in the sport, and it's very, very exciting. He's just having a good time his first year out, Richard. And his distance, 160. 62.08. I'm glad he's having a good time out here because that distance is not going to win the competition this afternoon. Ron Vandertuck out of Marion, Michigan. Up next is a dandy, though. It's Ronnie Hoffman from Greencastle, Pennsylvania. It's called the Instigator 2, and uh, he is powered by a 588 Rodec engine. Using methanol for fuel kind of looks like a double-A fuel alter from the old drag racing days. The driver sits in between the wheels. Roll cages, keep it on him. Look at this run. The weight looks to be perfect, Richard. The front end up just a little bit. Muscle is strong on the other end. But he is way short of our lead. 168.13 for the 1987 TNT Winter Points Champion. Ronnie Hoffman out of Greencastle, Pennsylvania, with a fair pulling distance, but it is not going to get him a win tonight at Memphis. We're going to go trackside, find out what happened with the pull and Ronnie Hoffman. 
Well, Ron Huffman, if there's anything such as perfect weight, it looked like you had it. The tracker looked like it laid down a perfect shot. Yeah, we got pretty lucky tonight, Army. It uh, felt pretty good. I think Ramirez is a little lacking on power, but we're coming along. I think the rest of the fellas are going to look and see what you did and adjust their weight accordingly. I would say a lot of them will. Uh, the track's getting better as it goes. It's probably going to get a lot better towards the end of the class. And coming out next is the brother tractor of the one we just saw. This is Terry Kirshner now, Instigator 1 out of Greencastle, Pennsylvania. You know, Army, back in 1980, Terry was named the Mini Rod Puller of the Year, so he has certainly got the experience over these other guys. He's going to be a force to reckon with this afternoon. He's had an opportunity to look at the track, notice where the other drivers are running their way. He's made the proper adjustments. Let's see if he can go up into that number one spot. Good ground speed at the start. with a little bit of horsepower. Problem at the end, though, as he bogs down. 164.57, never got it up to power, Army. Richard, the track looks like it's going to be coming around. He didn't have the combination. I believe somebody will find it before the evening's over. I'm looking for full pulls. All right, that distance in for Terry Kirshner, Army, that is going to be good enough right now to put him up into third place. Terry, we just received word you went to the third spot. You had a beautiful run going, except for about the last 10 feet. It looked like it jumped on you. What happened out there? I think I hit somebody's holes maybe to the right. It kind of get pitched me over, and I didn't want to hit the brakes to bring it back because I was losing speed very fast. And when you do that, it just kills you. So I tried to get the best out of it I could. I tell you, third against this group of pullers is not bad at all, though. It makes me feel real good right About all the guys on the circuit and how tough they are. Today, we have got a couple of ladies joining the competition. Our first one, Mary Ann Alderson out of Williamsport, Tennessee, driving the tractor Night Rambler. Is she good? Points champion, Middle Tennessee in 86 and 87. Army spent time with her earlier today. The first and foremost question, Mary Ann, is people want to know, what in the world is a young lady like you doing in this sport? Well, years ago, we had powder puffs, and my husband loves to build them, works with them, and the white lemon, oh, that's kind of gotten started in it. The, the tractor seems to be very, very competitive. Uh, it is around home. Um, okay, when you when you you say around home, the naturally aspirated engine, or the middle, carbureted engine. Middle Tennessee, East Tennessee, Western Kentucky. You pull all summer. What about the physical aspect of it? Do you have any problems driving the vehicle? I don't have any problems. I have a lot of fun with it. So it's actually fun to you. Your husband. Fun. Your husband works on the vehicle. And you do the driving. Yes, sir. But Mary Ann Alderson may be from the state of Tennessee. I don't think that was a Tennessee accent, though. She mentioned, Army, the naturally aspirated engine. What is that? A naturally aspirated engine is very similar to the engine you and I drive on our car on an everyday street. However, her competitors are running supercharged engine where the air is forced in. She's actually spotting them, Richard, about 500 horsepower. All right, the other lady we have here with us today is Belle Blosser out of Virginia, and you spend time with her today also. Well, Belle Blosser's kind of a unique story. She goes head-to-head -head with these guys driving the 2,000 horsepower mini rods, and... Well, how does a young petite thing like you do this? You're an awfully small young lady. How do you handle a 200 horsepower pulling uh, vehicle? Well, you do most of the driving with the brakes. It's really not that that hard as long as you can keep the as long as you get your weight distributed correctly. It uh, it handles pretty easy. It runs pretty straight down the track, so it's not really that hard. Okay, now you have a crew that goes with you. Do they handle the weighting and the setting of the engine or anything? And you just do the driving, or you take an active part in the actual preparation for the run? Well, we discuss it and. And then they usually place the weights. How did you get to be a mini rod driver? Well, my husband used to drive, and that was when the weight class was 1,500 pounds. And, of course, he gained a lot of weight, and it was harder and harder for him to make the weight class. So we decided rather than spend, keep spending money to get lighter, it would be easier for me to drive. Well, let's see how the ladies can do now as they come out in the competition. Distance to beat, 178.17. Our first lady to the line, Mary Ann Alderson, the night rambler from Williamsport, Tennessee. She has been pulling now about 11 years. Now remember, Mary Ann is giving away 500 horsepower. She's on the non-supercharged version, but she's coming out, taking a shot at him. Not going to work, Richard. She'll be a little bit short. A lot short. 90.44 for Mary Ann Alderson with that 468 Chevrolet engine. In it. Army had never got up any speed at all. Well, like we say, you got to remember she was giving away a whole lot of horsepower. Now, here's a horse of a different color. She's one-on-one -on -one horsepower with the big boys, and she believes she can nail them to the wall. Let's see what's going to happen. This is Belle Blosser out of Stonely, Virginia, called the Hillbilly Shaker, powered by a 557 Rodeck engine. 
Now, Richard, you're going to see a lot of power. With these mini rods, one thing that's very interesting to watch is the chassis flex. Look at the torque of the engine. As the engine goes up on the RPM, look at the frame of the tractor actually twisting and turning. And look at the ground speed she has, Richard. She's going to be proud of it. She has got a good distance, 169.84. That should be good enough right now to put Bell up into fifth place in the standings. A good afternoon's work. Richard, speaking of afternoons worth the little yellow vehicle you see there, that was the first national champion in this class years ago. Now, the work it does is that of a towing vehicle. Well, Bell Blosser has taken over fifth place. Army, she's got to be happy with that. What does it feel like going down that track with the 2,000 horsepower? That's a question everybody's asking. How could that young lady, small as she is, drive that much horsepower? Well, your weight is really the critical thing. As long as you have your weight right, it'll run fairly straight for you. Then you steer it with your brakes. Another thing, you're not afraid of this tractor one bit, are you? No. If you're afraid of it, you better stay off of it. I respect it because I know it can hurt you. Well, one thing I find a little bit surprising today is we have gone through seven tractors already, but our first puller is still our leader, Army. Well, the first puller sets number one right now, but the discussion all morning long was going to be a late track, meaning it's going to come in later in the field. We're getting to that position in the drawing order, and Richard, I am going to look for some horsepower to go down to the track, and who goes to the sled? None other than this kid out of New York State. We are talking about Stephen Doherty, the precious gem from Ravina, New York. We've got our first bull pull. He buried the nose in the sand pile, Richard. All right, so we have got a new saying on the beach now for a bull pull. What was the combination Stephen found? The track just came around. Now, you watch the rest of the field, Richard Leake. I guarantee you they're going to run on his same tracks. So we have got us a new leader in the name of Stephen Doherty. Well, Stephen, a long way from New York, but I believe you're going to have some money to take back home with you. That was one beautiful shot. Yeah, the track hooked up better than I even imagined tonight. Congratulations on a beautiful run. We're glad to have you down here in Memphis with us. I'm glad to be here. Nothing I enjoy more. Well, if anything, this just goes to prove that Army knows how to predict the track as it has come back. We have just got our first full pull of the afternoon. Scott Amy is our next puller, the Michigan Twister, out of Ida, Michigan. It's powered by a 564 Rodec blown engine. Scott's been around this game long enough to know what works for the man in front of you will work for you, too. And look where he lines up. Exactly the same tracks as the Precious Jim. This is going to be a dynamo run. The track has arrived. If you've got the horsepower, the track's here for you. Let's see what's going to happen. And what is the most prestigious pulling event in America? Bowling Green. This is the defending champion from the Bowling Green, Bowling Green Ohio pull. Scott Amy off and rolling in Memphis. Good ground speed, Army. He's running a good groove. Right here, look here. We're going to have back to back. Oh, pull. And he, I'm going to follow your line. He puts it on the beach also, the Michigan Twister, Scott Amy with our second full pull. And how about this? Both full pulls are back to back, so we're guaranteed a pull off right now between Scott and Stephen Doherty. Scott Amy and the Michigan Twister, you kind of were trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes out there. You did something nobody else did. You started on the right side of the track and went straight across to the left. Did that really work out well for you? Uh, I'm not sure it really worked the way I wanted it to, Army, but I figured maybe if I started to the right, I could cut everybody else's tracks and angle across the left side of the track. Uh, we still might have been a little heavy on the front, so we'll come back to the pull-off and see what we can do. Will you make any adjustments to the chassis when you get ready to come back for the pull-off? Will you move any weight around? Yeah, I imagine we will move about, uh, I'll say, 20 pounds or so off the front, back to the rear. And Longtime supporters of Tommy, we're glad to have him back on the tour with us. This guy will go after you in a heartbeat. Right hand on the throttle, left hand on the steering wheel. Ties the chain up, rolls the shot. Let's kick back and watch him, Richard. Tommy Cordell is starting to box down that 572 Chevy engine. Only 154.28. He had him confused because... We had back-to-back -back full pulls. It looked like the track was coming around, but Tommy Cordell says, wait a minute, the track is going away. What happened is he lined up in the tracks of two men in front of him. When two of them run, Richard, they're going to pretty well take your lane away, if you'll excuse the expression. It just wasn't there for the horsepower. 
Well, let's see what Dave Campbell can do now. Will he have a good or a bad track? Campbell trying to make up the difference by hanging the weight on the back. That's why the front end's up. That will definitely cost him. It cost him in distance 161.89. That is the distance for Dave Campbell. Good enough for about ninth place right now. Getting back to this track situation, Army, I guess you would think then that the remaining two pullers do not have much of an opportunity. They're going to have to go to a different groove. Now, Roger Wysong, he'll come out. And the last man in the line, Glenn Gunther, believe me, is going to be going someplace where nobody's been all day long. I don't know where that's going to be, but he's going to go out to what we call no man's land. He knows the bite is not on the right side of the track. He just got to hunt for it. All right, so look for different positions on the track when they start from the line here. This is Roger Wysong. He calls the tractor the Sting. He is out of Lewisburg, Ohio, and it is powered by a Chevrolet. 468 engines. Roger's in the manufacturing business, Richard. He actually manufactures these wheels that these pullers are using. He also having problem on the track army. Ground speed is not there for him. He won't like this run at all at a 155. 155.02. That is Roger Wysong, Lewisburg, Ohio. The Sting is the tractor and win or have a chance of winning this competition army. Tractors in this mini rod class. We're keeping an eye on a kid out of New York. You re pull and he order you full pull. First full puller, Precious Jim. Look at the intensity on that driver's face. He wants to win this, and he's got a shot at it. it Bill's down to three. It's up to him now. This is Stephen Doherty out of Ravina, New York, our first pull-off vehicle. Look at the driver work, Richard. He's going for every inch he can get. And his distance, 148.63, and of course, Army, for a pull-off, the sled is reweighted. They actually stack about 500 more pounds of weight on the sled. Pull-off, here we go. The second one to go out goes to the sled. Looks like a sprint car driver sitting enclosed in the cage with a fire suit ready to go. 2,000 horsepower, 1,650 pounds, 160 mile an hour wheel speeds. We're looking at the mighty minis in Memphis. And this is Scott Amy, Ida, Michigan. He calls it the Michigan Twister. He has got to beat 148.63. Crossed up at half track, Richard. Not going to do it. Well, maybe he can take second. It's 134.45 for Scott Amy. That is second place in this three tractor pull off. And here comes the king of kings in the sport of mini rod. This is Glenn Guther. Tough enough. Pine Bluff, Arkansas, our final puller in the pull off. If you're in this class, this guy could definitely be your worst nightmare. Let's see what's going to happen. Guther's going after him right now. I think he's got it, Army. Look at, look at this, Richard. He's literally muscling up to a 153 to take that win. He wins it by nearly five feet. Glenn Guther out of High Bluff, Arkansas. As we look at the top five, Bell Blosser takes fifth. Richard Peters fourth. Scott Amy in a pull-off third. Then Stephen Doherty second. And our winner tonight in Memphis, Glenn Guther with a distance of 153.27 and a pull-off another great show by the Mini Rods. Well, Richard, you see why this is one of the most popular classes out there and the fastest growing sport because of the action, action, action. Well, that's going to do it in Memphis, Tennessee for Army Armstrong. I'm Richard Leak. We'll see you again on the tracks across America. Join us next time for Power Tracks, the most powerful.